Well, this is unexpected. All the snakes with blue tape are going into brumation in three days. And today, mitosis has decided to go through mitosis. We've got eggs. What did you do? Why are you laying eggs you haven't eaten in a month? Cause you're supposed to be going into brumation soon. Yeah, I understand why you look at me hungry like like that. But, oh my gosh. First, mitosis, did you get all your eggs out? Oh my gosh. Oh, hi, hi, yes, you're trying to eat me. Yeah, yeah, looks like she got all the eggs out. All right, well, what a good girl. Oh my gosh, yeah, you look great. By the way, if you don't already know, mitosis was named such because it looks like her spots are like cells going through mitosis, it's kind of cool. But you weren't supposed to lay eggs today? No, you're supposed to go into brumation. Why'd you do this? And that actually looks like a good egg, too. What else do we have in here? Oh, you pooped on one. Lovely. Well, these eggs are a little deflated looking, so, I mean, understandably so, you didn't have a lay box, because you weren't supposed to lay the eggs. Thank you for not taking after your mother, though, and eating them afterwards, because these do actually look like good eggs. So I guess we'll take them out, and not put you in brumation this year, and instead, we'll give you a meal. Oh my gosh, mitosis. Now we have you in the classroom, where I can you know, more calmly look at everything with the camera actually on a stand. Why did you lay eggs? Why did you do this? You're supposed to go into brumation Saturday. Now we have to keep you awake and feed you all throughout. Oh, that's why you did it. You wanted food throughout the winter, didn't you? That's probably why you laid eggs, because now you know I can't brumate you because you've lost weight. All right, well, we are going to take a look at these little eggies. Oh my gosh. Okay, so we're really cr crumpled in here. Hopefully that can bounce back. Two eggs, three eggs, four eggs. Oh my gosh, look at all of these. They all look fertile too. Six eggs. Oh my gosh, mitosis. Are there any more? Oh, okay, none there. Oh my gosh, there's more in the cave. Okay. Oh, these are really crumpled in though, so I don't know. Okay, my prediction is this one, this one, and this one are a little too crumpled in because she laid them on the heat, not in a lay box because we weren't expecting her to lay eggs. And because of that, they're pretty dimpled. So I don't know if those three are gonna make it, but I think two, four, six are gonna be just fine. But the important thing we have to do is get them into the incubator ASAP where they can start rehydrating. So we're gonna move her aside. We've got just a container here, this will work. Put our eggs here on the side. I'm trying not to rotate them because I don't know exactly how old they are actually. So in case the embryo has already attached to the side of the egg, I don't want to rotate them because too much movement at that point can injure or kill the embryo. Not that it always does, but there's a risk. And here's something I haven't done in a while. Poured perlite in a container. It's supposed to be past baby season right now. And here we are getting new fresh eggs. Oh my gosh, will I even know how much water to add? I might have forgotten the ratios. Oh. Squeeze test, ah, oh, still got it. Still maintained its shape there and didn't drip water underneath. Okay, now to get these eggs in here right away so they can start rehydrating since they're already a little bit dimpled in. Man, I can actually see red through the shells. These might be a little bit older than I was thinking actually. Oh my gosh, look at these eggs. Yeah, look, right there you can see pinkness. Right there you can see pinkness. I think there's already veins in these eggs. Oh my gosh, that's so cool. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine eggs total. Six of which I think are fine, three are questionable. Um, I guess we will mark the top of these eggs just like we normally would and then pop them in the incubator. Okay, I think since there is snow outside and it is <laughs> almost December, we're gonna go with a winter theme for these eggs, which we've never done before because eggs are normally laid in spring. Still don't know Know why this happened, but that's okay. We're gonna have fun with a winter theme. And the reason why we marked the tops of the eggs, since it has been a little while, there we go, we've got a snowflake there. The uh, reason why we marked the top of the eggs is because if they were to roll in incubation, which sometimes they seem to roll on their own, I don't know how they do it, but say this tray were to fall out, heaven forbid, of the incubator. We would then know what side is up because again, once the embryo has attached to the side of the egg, you wanna keep them in the same position so that it doesn't risk drowning. So we just mark the top, but instead of just doing a little line or an X, we have fun and do little designs with a theme usually. Okay, so for these last three, they're so crumpled, I don't have enough space to draw anything on them. I'm hoping they re-expand, but I don't have high hopes. So we're just gonna draw a tiny little mark so I know which side is up, but we're not gonna be surprised if they end up disappearing between now and when the babies hatch. But the rest look pretty good. So here we have a Christmas tree, a snowman, a snowflake, a cup of cocoa, a failed sled attempt, and a Santa hat. Ta-da! Our 
winter slash, I guess now holiday themed or Christmas themed egg clutch. And they were laid on 11. 29, which is so strange to me. Why did she do this? And before we forget, my toe sis and, oh, we paired her with a couple of males. So we're gonna have to wait till the babies come out to see what they are. So these are gonna be another surprise clutch of babies. We'll get condos and maybe some super condos from these. All right, we have a couple clutches of eggs in here already. Those are from our mangrove snakes and those are Sharon the tortoise's eggs. But the problem is it's going to be very cold starting tomorrow, so the dry Drafts from outside are actually going to fluctuate the temperatures of our incubator too much to be safe for eggs. So we are going to move these eggs and mitosis's eggs into the Wheelbanks incubator. We're gonna put them in the small one because we actually need that one to turn it into a brumation station since Wheelbanks can like go either way, up or down in temp. So we need this as of this weekend for brumation, yet here we are also needing an incubator. So I guess they really come in handy. Ed's not here today. Did I do it? Is that it? Setting 82, chamber 71 currently. Okay, well, that's easy. That's actually a lot easier than I thought it would be. I guess we'll let this warm up and actually I really need those eggs to go into an incubator. So I might put the eggs in here while it's warming up to get them warm ASAP. All right, the good thing is I can trust this incubator to warm up at a steady rate. So the eggs should be fine. And now they're in incubation. And once it's up to temp, we'll move those other eggs over too. Okay, it's been a couple days. The uh, inc incubator has been holding steady at 82. We have a device in there to read it too. And let's take a look, see how these eggs are. Looking after two days. Ah, just as I suspected, that egg, that egg, and that egg are probably too far gone. But look at how well the others swelled up. They look almost perfect. Those four look great. That one could use a little more moisture, and so could that one. But overall, they look really good. We're definitely going to get four babies, possibly six, out of this clutch. That is awesome. Okay, so now that those are good to go, I'm going to go ahead and move. We have some other eggs in the incubator up front, so you guys get to join me in doing that too. All right, here's our incubator. We have mangrove eggs, which are awesome. They look great. And these are eggs that you don't know about yet. And you're going to learn about them later. Haha, <laughs> I'm not going to tell you what they are yet. So we're going to grab all these, close up the incubator. There we go. And the incubator is now going to be empty until it warms up because the draft from that door cools down and actually fluctuates this temperature inside too much. So it's about time these move to another incubator anyway. All right, our mangrove eggs, since we're here, we'll take a look. Eee! They look so good. They're due to hatch in like two weeks too. So it seems like this species, or at least our female, creates eggs that are so thick the babies can't cut them at all. So I'm just gonna wait until day 60 and then cut a hole for them because we lost our last clutch because I was waiting them for them to hatch naturally. We're moving those back here because it's drafty up front now. Yeah. Yep. Ed's here now. We are moving these well, in here next to mitosis eggs. There you go, mangroves. This one is sitting between 83 and 80. Oh, perfect. So oh, yeah, that's average a... of 81.4. Great. Yeah, that'll yeah. work just fine. Okay, we're going to move these in here. Not going to tell you about those eggs, though, because you'll have to learn about those in another video. And ta-da! Mitosis' eggs are in incubation. Wait, what do you mean mitosis? Oh, yeah, mitosis. She, you know, the hog nose that's yeah. going into brumation. The one that needs to go down for the winter? Yes, like tomorrow she's yeah. due to go down. Yeah, she laid eggs. Uh-huh. They look actually... Do they, yeah, look okay? They're definitely fertile. It looks yeah. like... I mean, they'll be fine for another minute here. They. It looks like we're going to lose a couple of them because we weren't expecting eggs, so we didn't notice them right away. But that one went bad. I think that one's going bad, and I think that one's going to go bad. We'll leave them in there Possibly a little longer. that one. Yep, maybe that one, maybe that one. But I think those two are still salvageable. We could drop some more water in here just to... Did they soak up a inflate? bunch already? Yeah. Oh yeah, it is already Somebody considerably drier. All right, okay, Ed has returned with water. Got clean water. Clean water, nice. Yeah, just add some to the corners. This is kind of what you do throughout incubation, just adding a little bit of water to the corners so it doesn't make too much contact with the eggs themselves. And that should do it. Man, they absorbed a lot of the water within just the first couple of days, but they were pretty crinkled in to begin with, so I guess that makes sense. They needed a drink. They were thirsty little baby eggs. You can go back in the incubator and now you should be nice and happy. Only our snakes would give birth yeah. two days before brumation. I know, right? Now we have to keep her awake. Yeah, I think mitosis did it on purpose. She, she wants to eat throughout the winter? Yeah. Oh. Ah, you hurt my eyeballs. What did I do? <laughs> oh, whoops, I turned on the flash. <laughs> okay, since mitosis has apparently trained us and learned how to get out of brumation and get yeah. fed all winter long. Here she is. Here she is, mitosis. You laid eggs. Here's the deal. You get a mouse. 
Oh my gosh. Wow. Well, she's gone a month she without inhaled. eating. Oh no. Other, it looked like she just inhaled that. Oh no, she went to the side. <laughs> Typical hog nose fashion. Which Makes by sense. the way, in case you don't know why hog noses almost always grab their food sideways, it's because in the wild, here in Minnesota, we're lucky enough to have this species. It's my favorite species and they're in our backyards. They specialize in eating toads and the toads they grab sideways. And when toads are um, feeling threatened, they sometimes kind of puff up a bit and that backfires when it's a hog nose that's eating them because hog noses are rear fanged. So they end up kind of deflating the toad once it yeah. puffs Popping. up. Yeah, it doesn't <laughs> pop and like explode. That would be awesome and terrifying. At the horrifying. Same time. Yes, but it does. <laughs> it probably itself. just goes. Tss. Yeah. <laughs> oh gosh, are you gonna fold it sideways? Great. So that's why hog nose is almost. It depends on the hog, but a lot of them grab the mouse sideways as they would a toad in the wild. She actually doesn't look that deflated. She doesn't actually. She looks still pretty good. A bit smaller than I'd like, but she just laid eggs. So, girl, you weren't supposed to lay eggs right now. You yeah. were supposed to be going in the fridge. You're a terrible mom. But she looks happy, doesn't she? Yes, she does. She's like, oh, now I get to stay awake all su all winter and yes, eat. She sure does. All right. Well, thank you for watching today's December egg video. Yeah. I don't think we've ever had a December egg video before. We've had December babies, but not eggs because this is just weird. But thank you guys for watching. Thank you, Patreon backers, for your amazing support as always. And let the baby season continue into winter. Yeah. I guess we'll see you guys in February.